Sometimes writers try to feel smart when they're actually incompetent Nepo baby hacks. The easiest way to do that is to subvert expectations, as they would say. I prefer the term that our wise ancestors would use. Blueballing your audience. What does blueballing mean? Well, uh... Don't worry about it. Let's just say it's when the climax of the story is ruined. This isn't actually writing advice so much as it is a uh, suggestion, I guess. Over the past several years, I've noticed this obsession with trying to subvert expectations and audiences. I don't think there's anything wrong with subverting expectations in and of itself, but I feel like some people are doing it just to cover up badly written stories, lazy prose, or boring characters. I think it's because most books go through very strict quality filters through agents and editors who are themselves competent storytellers. I only read epic fantasy and the occasional sci-fi book, so it might be different in other genres, but I'm not about to find out. Scripts for movies and video games tend to go through tons of rewrites from directors and producers who think they know how to write when they barely know how to do their own jobs. Just because a story is predictable does not make it boring in the slightest. One of the most fundamental structures in writing a good story is setup and payoff, creating tension and releasing it. Plot twists are good for short-term excitement, but a good setup and payoff lasts for an entire story and beyond. If your story is teeing up something amazing and doesn't deliver, it's nothing but a giant blue ball factory. That's right, a giant factory that produces nothing but giant swollen testicles that ruin my mood for the rest of the day. It is my very personal opinion that if you are planning on subverting expectations with a plot twist or intentionally choosing not to deliver on something that you've been setting up throughout your whole story, you better have a really damn good reason for doing it. Here are a few examples of some of the worst offenders of blue balling that I can remember. I guess the reasonable thing to do would be to throw up a spoiler warning, but I hate these stupid stories so much that spoiling them for you couldn't possibly make them any worse. Most of these examples are really old anyway. I remember the first time a story blue balled me so hard that I wanted to throw my god dang drink at the screen. I was in my late teens when The Grey starring Liam Neeson came out. For those that don't know, it's a story about a bunch of dudes who get stranded in the tundra and are hunted by a very big pack of wolves, and Liam Neeson has to guide them to safety. All of the trailers for this movie hyped it up as this big, epic confrontation between Liam Neeson and a pack of wolves. I remember specifically the trailer I would see before all of the movies at the time saying stuff like, prepare for the epic battle, or something like that. The whole movie is objectively well shot. The tone is grim and hopeless and does a pretty good job of showing how helpless most modern men can be when put up against nature unprepared. There's multiple moments where Liam Neeson stares down the alpha wolf or whatever and this brewing hatred starts to form between the two. By the end of the movie, Liam Neeson is kneeling in the center of the den as the alpha wolf stares him down one last time. He realizes his only way out is to beat the Alpha in a one-on-one -on -one fight. He like duct tapes a whole bunch of like tiny bottles between his knuckles and smashes them up against the rocks and then he draws a knife ready to fight for his life. I'm sitting at the edge of my seat, my heart about to burst out of my chest thinking, man this is gonna be so damn cool. Right as the two are about to charge each other, the movie cuts to credits. That's right, you don't even see the fight. Some people will be like, an ambiguous ending. We aren't supposed to know if he survives or not. Well, I'll actually know. There is a mid credit scene where you see him laying on the alpha wolf, petting it as it takes its last breaths. So we get a glimpse of the outcome of the fight anyway. No ambiguity at all. So what exactly was the goddamn point? All this buildup and for what? Honestly, it makes me sick. Like seriously, I, I feel sick right now. I know it's not Liam Neeson's fault, but I still blame him somehow. Independent movies do this shit all the time too. The latest example I can think of is the movie Duel starring Karen Gillian. What sucks about this one is that I really enjoyed like 99% of the movie, but because of its extremely blue balling ending, I can only look back on it with absolute disgust. This movie's about a satirical sci-fi future where people can clone themselves whenever they know they're about to die soon, so that the clone can take over their lives after they're gone. If the person ends up not dying, they are required by law to duel that clone to the death in a public televised event one year later. 
We follow our protagonist training really hard during that year to fight for her life that she really didn't enjoy that much in the first place. She trains herself body, mind, and spirit to fight a clone of herself that has proven to be better than her in many ways. We get to the end of the movie and once again, there is no fight. The clone poisons the original in the woods after tricking her into thinking they can run away together and be besties. My balls were so swollen I couldn't walk for three days. The entire movie builds up to this one fight to the death. It calls itself Duel for God's sake and it still doesn't deliver. What makes this so egregious to me is that they didn't fail to deliver. They straight up refused to deliver. If the fight actually happened and it wasn't that good or exciting, I could forgive that. I would just shrug my shoulders and move on. But now, I'm sitting here making this video. Why did they make me do this? Movies and TV shows do this a lot, but video games can blue ball their audience just as badly if not worse. I can honestly forgive a game that has a terrible story. I appreciate games that have good stories, but I don't think it's a necessity. I want solid gameplay, good boss fights, and fair, challenging difficulty. I feel like the Souls-like genre was made specifically to cater to me. You're welcome everybody else. But every now and again I cross paths with a game that just woke up one day and decided it was going to disappoint everybody. Bioshock Infinite was that game for me. Overall, I think that the gameplay was pretty good. Story was stupid as hell, but whatever. The real sin of this game is denying us a proper fight with Songbird. There are multiple points throughout the game where you come in direct confrontation with the massive flying big daddy Songbird. They are all cutscenes, but they give you the sense that one day you'll be strong enough to square up with this behemoth as an equal and overcome it. Nope, not at all. I don't remember the specifics, but I think you mind control it for a little while and it helps you fight off the last wave of bad guys and then dies. What makes it even worse is that the mind control wears off after the battle and the game makes you think that for just a second that you're actually going to get to fight this guy. Oh yeah! But as soon as the mind control wears off, the big badass wasted opportunity is killed in a cutscene in the weakest way possible. I can almost understand the thought process behind a movie deciding to intentionally deny the audience a satisfying payoff, but I cannot wrap my head around why a studio would intentionally deny its audience an epic boss fight. This game's mechanics were perfectly set up for it. There were plenty of smaller boss fights throughout the game, so why not give us a big one at the end? Maybe the dev team ran out of time and I'm sure they were already overworked, but at the end of the day that doesn't make my balls any less blue. Another game that did something similar was Star Fox Adventures for the GameCube. They had like this really cool villain throughout the story named General Scales, and you think you're going to get to fight him in some awesome sword fight at the end, but he is also killed off in a cutscene immediately as soon as you draw your weapon. I know that this game went through a lot of nonsense during development and honestly wasn't even supposed to be a Star Fox game to begin with. Every time I think about it, it really bums me out. It took me forever to beat that game when I was little and I finally get to the end to fight General Scales and it just doesn't happen. That's why I'm going to make it happen myself. I downloaded the character models for the game and I plan to animate them fighting each other in the way that I've always imagined it as a kid. The developers of the game couldn't give me a satisfying ending so I will tell them what I tell my wife when she comes home from work with a headache. Fine. I'll do it myself. Last, but definitely least, is probably the most blatantly ridiculous example of misusing a plot twist for absolutely no good reason. Many of you may be familiar with this example, but you're going to hear me talk about it anyways, even though it's been several years now. Game of King Thrones. Yeah, that's right, I'm still whining about it all these years later. If this show wasn't so damn good throughout most of its runtime, I wouldn't have cared so badly how it ended. I was willing to accept all the wacky things that happened in Season 7, but the final battle with the Night King was so unimaginably bad that I didn't even bother finishing the rest of the series. I feel like I speak for everyone when I say how disappointing it was that Jon Snow didn't get a chance to cross blades with the Night King. The entire show has been building up to this moment where Jon could finally fulfill his destiny and defend his childhood home from the greatest evil in the whole series. Even within the context of the episode itself, we are led on to believe that the fight is coming. It's always just around the corner the entire episode. We even had the perfect battlefield set up for each of them to duel each other. They were literally right there! 
Even if the Night King got away, just a single good exchange would have made me happy, or at least happier. What, what did we get instead? Arya popping out of nowhere and one-shotting the biggest bad guy in the entire series. Stupid! Absolutely stupid! I don't care that it was her that got the kill. I think it would have been cool if she, Bran, and Jon fought the Night King together as a family. But no, that would have been too predictable, I guess. This was a very intentional decision by the utter hacks that ran that show. They explicitly stated in an interview somewhere that I don't feel like finding right now that they didn't think it was right that Jon would get the kill, despite it being set up perfectly since day one. Nobody would have complained if we got to see Jon defeat the big bad guy. And if you are one of those people who would have complained, then go back to therapy and get back on your meds. Speaking of therapy, this video is sponsored by BetterHelp because you're going to need way better help to get over your terrible taste. I could literally go on forever roasting movies that I didn't like, but I think I've made my opinions annoyingly clear by now. Very annoyingly clear. The best stories ever told are all predictable. I imagine that the first time you ever watched your favorite movie or read your favorite book, you were easily able to predict how it was going to end. Maybe you couldn't figure out the specifics, but maybe the broad strokes were pretty clear to you. Of course, this doesn't apply to the mystery or thriller genre where predictability is not as important, but even then, subverting expectations carelessly just to do it doesn't make a very good story. Just ask M. Night Shyamalan. I feel bad just sitting here ranting this whole time. Let me see if I can give you some kind of, I don't know, when opinionated, actionable advice to take away from all this. Um, hmm. Let's see. Try to be mindful of your audience's expectations. If you're planning on subverting those expectations, you better be certain that whatever it is you're giving them is way better than what they might have been expecting in the first place, not just different. If you promise your audience you're going to give them a sandwich and instead give them a knuckle sandwich straight in the jaw because they didn't see it coming, they aren't going to think that you're clever. They're just going to think you're an asshole. If you promise to give them a sandwich and instead give them a perfectly cooked steak dinner, they'll remember it for the rest of their lives, assuming they have good taste. Some people argue that a really unsatisfying ending is still good writing because people will be talking about it forever. If the girl I met on Tinder in college remembers me for the rest of her life because I was unsatisfying, I think I might just fake my own death. Yeah. Yeah.